Uh, okay, so what do we got? We got this. We got this. We got this. New note. Bum, 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 bum. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? It's going to open up the restream chat here. Everything's locked and loaded and working for live. We're looking good, looking good, liking where we're at. Uh, Zemetica guys, big news from them, they retired their preferred shares, which means that they get to keep in pocket 9% of their royalties that otherwise would have gone out. So really, really getting excited about Zemetica here, guys. Uh, very, very excited for what I am seeing. Let's go here, here, here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hopefully everybody had a great weekend out there. Um, didn't actually look at a ton of news this morning. Uh, I, I looked at a little bit, but not not a ton. Um, what we're looking at here, guys. Travel, entertainment. What was the third sector I picked? Travel, entertainment, and sporting. Those are the big three. Those are the big three I'm going to be keeping my eyes peeled for over the next three to four weeks, guys. Um, if Zemetica hits my price target, I will pay off my mortgage. If Zemetica hits my price target, $10, I will pay off my mortgage in its entirety. I'll be done. Which will make me completely debt free at 36 years old. I will own my property and it's all tendies. From here on out. Early retirement. Loving it. Just build up some capital here. Retire by 40. Hit them golf courses. You know what I mean. Behind Denny's if it doesn't. No. No, it doesn't hit my price target. I still think it's going to go up. I just, I, I won't be able to pay off the mortgage as quick. Still got to pay your real estate tax to the king. My real estate tax is nothing. I'd probably go to Hawkesbury, Harvey K, but yeah. Yeah, I don't tend to scale out. I, I tend to exit the position in its entirety. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the mortgage is all I've got left. So once the mortgage is done, I'm done. And there's not really that much left on the mortgage. There's 150K, so... Uh, do I golf? Uh, I don't golf, but that's that's kind of what I would like to do. I'd like to take up golf. Um, yeah, yeah. I hear it's a really great course, so I mean that's that's kind of what I'd like to do. Uh, probably like to take the missus on some traveling, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, but. I'm not, not counting the eggs before my hatch. I'm just saying if I hit price target, uh, that'll happen. So I'm going to grab coffee. I'm going to grab water. I'm going to come back. Uh, marbles is still not working for me. So we're going to keep doing the random number generator. So I will be back in two seconds. Uh, why be debt free when you can use it as capital leverage? Because I can always make more money. I'd rather just clear the debt. Um, if the entire Canadian economy collapses, I want to have no debt. Because that means that you are the last person the government comes to bug for money. They're, they're going to chase down everybody that owes them something. I'd rather be debt free. Come down closer to Montreal. Yeah, I mean, once the borders are opening up, uh, Montreal is definitely somewhere we're going to be heading.
Those figs are going to go bad if you don't put them in the fridge. You're a dried fruit. Uh, yeah, I mean, Florida, we might do a cruise out of Florida. We'll see. All right, I got 52. 52 people in chat is what I'm seeing. So, ladies and gentlemen, pick a number. First number in. First person to pick it. Uh, I'll give you guys like two, three minutes here. Or until the numbers stop coming in. This is not the number. I will roll the number when it's the number. <sighs> 54. That's hilarious. <laughs> I can almost, with 100% certainty, say that 54 will not show up uh, from 1 to 52. Mm -hmm. 81 also will probably not be rolled. Um it's just the first number you put in. So anybody that's got like three, four numbers in, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's roll it. That's good enough. I, I think everybody's got their number in, right? 50. Who had it? Anybody go 50? I don't see a 50 on the dot. Okay, next. 33. Steel Man. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. You know the deal. You pick the ticker, sir. You pick the ticker. How was your weekend, guys? I hope everything went well for you this weekend. Uh, I did add a new book to the read list. Um, it was Trend Following. Um, now, apparently, Trend Following is a TA book. Uh, is a 35-hour listen. Uh, from start to finish for me. I do recommend you get the audiobook instead of the physical book because the audiobook actually has live interviews between uh, the author and the trader. So, or the author and these traders. Um, so, I am not a TA trader, I am an FA trader, but I found that the first half of the book, first seven and a half hours, are good irregardless of whether you're a TA or FA trader. Um, at about seven and a half hours, they do start talking about technicals and chart patterns and math and all that. And I, I don't do that. If you're TA, you'll probably love it. Uh, for me, I, I wasn't a fan. Uh, it was about three hours of that. So that those three hours for me were kind of useless. And then they get into interviews directly with traders that have long-term success. And I, I was really blown away with the interviews because it was great to read. They had some psychologists. Ever read Commanding Heights? No. I can add it to the books to read list. Uh, this one I have read. Clove? Yeah, definitely we can watch Clove. Uh, Clove, I think, is actually in a really great position right now. I know for those of you that have been holding it from 14 or 15 or 16 or whatever, you're... You're not feeling the love at it, but I honestly think, guys, where it is, it it's gonna it's gonna do really well. It's a macroeconomics book about central planning versus high free markets. Yeah, um, I mean, I'll throw them on here for sure. I've got a bunch of books that are still in my cart that I need to listen to. So uh, when I burn through those, I'm gonna start going through the suggested reads for sure. Um, this one, my Copal, actually looks really good. I do need to dive back into some more psychology books. I've been doing a lot of uh, books about how the market itself works. Uh, but for me, psychology is key, and I want to really stay on top of my game with that. So um, there was another one from... What's the name? Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow was another book that came highly recommended. Um, a trend phone book. Um, but yeah, guys, market psychology is a big one. Already read that one. It's already on the list. 
If you are a TA trader, that's the first book I recommend um, you read as you try to figure out your trading methodology. If you are an FA trader, this is the first book that I recommend that you get, Culture Code by Daniel Coyle. Uh, this will be fundamental, this will be foundational for you as a fundamental trader, uh, understanding group psychology and how large groups of people react to problems and crisis. Um, that's kind of the big deal for me. Um, really, really love the read, a lot of practical examples. So. Oh, man. Okay. Um, SPACs, not watching anything for SPACs this week, guys. There's no uh, merger completion. That's what I'm waiting for to pop up here. I think maybe in April we start to see some of these um, votes to approve combination turning into merger completed dates. Uh, but we will see what we will see. The last merger we had completed was on the 26th. So still waiting, waiting for that to come in. Um, what's going on over here on Twitter? Anything big? Abolish the monarchy. Federal Reserve is put out. PPP is getting, um, the Paycheck Protection Program is getting extended till June 30th. So this is good for the market. Um, uh, this is something about International Women's Day today. Yeah, people are saying Kathy, like, it's amazing how quickly people turn. Like, Kathy Woods is a genius, man. ARC fund forever. It's going to be the best thing the market has ever had. And then tech cools down for one week and people are like, Kathy Woods, she don't know nothing. ARC is a piece of dog shit just like everything. It's like, you guys are chickens with your heads cut off running around. Like, it, it's absolute insanity. Absolute insanity. This woman is wicked smart, guys. It really, like, it, it is mind-blowing to me that after one week of decline in the tech sector, people are like, ah, Kathy Woods, she's so stupid. Get a life. <laughs> and you better, six months, nice. Um, I, I don't think that there's a mismanagement. She's very, very calculated in the positions that she takes. Uh, just because those positions are on a decline right now does not mean that she was uh, mismanaging liquidity. I think that she's done an excellent job in buying a dip on some of these. For her to buy more Tesla, uh, I think was great. For her to buy more Palantir, I think was great. 12 months will tell. T-Rent, three months, let's go. Um, but yeah, uh, I really, really think that uh, by the end of the year, people will be eating their hat. She is. She's wicked smart. The fees are so high for ARK. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my big issue with this, uh, with any of these, these funds, is the, the fees are ridiculous. Uh, does it worry you when everybody seems to be on the same play like Palantir? No. Uh, no. It'd be like back in the day. Would I be worried if everybody had Ford in their portfolio back in the 60s? 50s? No. Just makes sense. Palantir might be going down, but it has a lot of good fundamentals about it. Yeah, I, I as somebody who just trades technical. <laughs> fuck off. The, the fundamentals. Uh my mindset on it is this. 
Palantir has the U.S. government by the balls. That, that's a green. Um, Tesla is going to own all of the infrastructure, the entire grid, both power and internet, in 10 years. They're, they're like, <laughs> it, come on. Those two companies are going to be just fine. The ARC Fund is not a DGEN day trade account. She's not taking dailies or weeklies on these tickers. It is a it is about buying stocks, holding stocks that are going to produce value. Why Zemedica? Uh, I when you have as much hype as been dropped on Zemedica for me as a a qualitative fundamental analyst on my positions, everything is looking so good on Zemedica. Uh, we have their initial release in a biopharma company that's huge. Uh, they've got their sales teams trained, ready to go. They're on track for that. We are yet to see what their uh, their forecasted uh, earnings are going to be for the next quarter, uh, but they are debt-free, ready to roll. Their product is about to hit the market. Uh, well, no, ACRX was a different place. So ACRX already had FDA approval for three or four years when I started playing it. The thing with ACRX that we were waiting for was the approval from the U.S. Army and how big those purchases are. Zemedica, for me, is something completely different. Zemedica is you getting in on a product that is about to launch, the first product for them, and the sector that it's launching to is losing their mind over this thing. The vet sector is blown away by what this tool can do, and it looks like it's just going to be gangbusters for them out the gate. So um, we are we got a, a notice on Friday that their sales teams were trained and ready to roll, um, which means that pre-sales have are going to begin as of today. Uh, they should have a number on pre-sales uh, the week of the 31st. So we'll see what that looks like. But honestly, guys, I, I think that this just buys up on the hype. And we'll see how high it goes um, by the end of the month. Who knows? Who knows how high it can run? But I, I'm I'm pretty excited for Zemetica. Um, I do have a rather large position in it. I will disclose oh my that. God. Millennial. So uh, on the weekend, uh, I would, some CBC uh, thing on YouTube caught my eye and I watched it. And it was basically saying that our prime minister was saying that uh, he felt like our country was too privileged and that we are going to give, uh, trying to figure out a way to give our COVID vaccines to less than franchise countries. That thing got fucking roasted because uh, we're just like, uh, people were saying like, so we're at one and a half percent. We are significantly behind the US and like a bunch of the other G1 countries and some of the third world-ish countries even in percentages, not even uh, by population, and uh, and he's already trying to f try to figure a way to try to grandstand and say like, oh, we we don't need this. We we should give it to other countries to try to make it seem like he's a good guy. That's you're basically trying to kill your own citizens to appeal to everybody else. That thing got pulled. <laughs> that I've never seen that before. They pulled that video. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiots. Oh man. I just, I have, so not getting into political parties and liberal versus conservative and all that. When you're elected to run a country, your job, your primary concern isn't being liked. It isn't taking care of other countries. Your job, your only job is to care about the country you were elected to run and to get the best deal for your country. Okay. Okay. That's it. That that, in my opinion, whether you're a a, a king, a prime minister, a president, a, a chairman, uh, whatever it is, whatever title they've given you, czar, I don't care. Your job is to take care of your country. If that means other countries get cucked because of what you're doing, tough. That's that country's problem. The head of that country needs to figure out their own thing. Now, are there times when diplomacy can be beneficial for two countries? Absolutely. But even with these massive trade agreements, with everything that's going on in the world, your job as the head of the country is still trying to get your country the best deal. Period. If you stop doing that, if you start being more concerned about the celebrity and the hype of being the head of a country, and you want to be well-liked, and you want to be popular with the, the global community, you're not doing your job. You're, a bit, you're an over-glorified actor and you need to be taken out of office. You might hate, like, you might hate in a, uh, 
uh, President Netanyahu from uh, Israel and stuff like that, or whatever your opinions and stances are on it, the dude paid a premium to get the vaccine first, and he has a 40% vaccination rate in his country already. Canada's at one and a half percent. Compare that to forty percent. Like my okay. So here's the thing: if your ruler is well liked around the globe, everybody else likes him. I would do a really, really good job about looking at what they're actually accomplishing. Now, if your ruler is absolutely despised around the world, it's probably because he's putting your country's interests ahead of everybody else. Which is good for you, but bad for the world. Vis-a-vis -vis Trump, Netanyahu, uh, Putin, uh, Winnie the Pooh, all of them, right? All of the leaders that are despised globally are the ones that give no fugs what you think about what they're doing and are just doing what they think is best for their own country. And in some case themselves, but you know, it also benefits the country vicariously. <laughs> I guess I could add Boris Johnson on there too, where he just doesn't care what anybody else thinks. Um, this isn't an advocacy for a Republican or Democrat, because there can be de Democratic uh, or, or more liberal left-leaning people that everybody hates as well. And I, I would still say that that's good, because what they're doing, as long as they hate them for born just Johnson's buffoon. So here it goes, right? Like, Trump's an asshole. Johnson's a buffoon. Putin's a moron. Netanyahu's a racist. Uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh is, is a maniacal genocidal maniac. Great. Like, okay. <laughs> like, uh. ooh, two months, Stoby. It's like a real thing. I'm going to have to buy you a bottle of wine and some flowers. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to screw with Putin. Anybody that anybody that wants to go five head against Putin, I'm out. I'll put my money on Putin. That man that man plays some serious chess. I I want I ugh. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was it? Cuz cuz what Netanyahu did my my landlords are um, of Jewish descent, like from Israel and stuff like that, right? They've been gone for like two, three months, mostly because it's cold up here in Canada, and because um, I would imagine they still retain their citizenship, so they are entitled to uh, the vaccination there as well. So, yeah. <laughs> This is really hilarious. So people are saying, the deal's not done. Stimulus isn't here yet. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a done deal. So here's what has to happen now with the stimulus. It has to go back to the House and be read and voted on. Anybody think the Democrat-owned House is going to reject the Democrat-approved Senate bill? Anyone? Again, that's a bet I am happy to take. There's the bell, though, ladies and gents. Let's see what we've got. Imagine the House Dems shutting down the stimulus. If they do that, it, it would be political suicide. Cut them all. Putin is a psychopath. I, I mean, yeah, sure. But he's also running his country till 2030. <laughs> like, it's the, the man plays chess with people. Oh yeah, so uh, I had a uh, tacos. Uh, remember how I was saying I, I wish we were going back to like one of those good old days and stuff like that. Uh, I had tacos with my friend uh, on the weekend, and he is the like the biggest self-proclaimed uh, anarchist like that he that we we all know and stuff like that, right? He's like, yeah, man, I just like I'm, I'm one of the biggest anarchists that I know, and uh, yet you know the whole GME thing inspired me to start investing and just start like you know looking at w the way capitalism is from a different scope and like the GME it, it's it was crazy because like he's like the GME thing really changed my perspective and got me to start researching about you know collecting uh long-term investing precious metals and all that sort of stuff and he's like I started my uh my investment account 
um i bought some silver i collect baseball cards and just like i he, he's collecting blue jays cards and he's just like I, he feels like it's gonna uh go up in value someday especially if we have this continued uh, asset inflation you'd be incorrect on that um <laughs> Canadian sports memorabilia is not worth uh, a drop in the bucket. Command Whisper. Thank you. Coffee delivered. Thank you very much. Okay. This is why I don't, um, this is guys, why I don't do the so collectibles. Before we get started today, well, I mean, these collectibles that I have back here, they do just continue to appreciate every single day. Um, and as long as superheroes continue to be popular, uh, as long as Superman and Captain America are around, in the next and spider-man around in the next 40 years i'm gonna be fine um lance thanks for the follow man much appreciated uh guys before we get going here today everything that you hear whether it's me on on stream or another voice in the in the mic or you've got people in chat saying things none of us are financial professionals you're, you're not to trust anybody on the internet that tells you to do anything um what we do here is hang out together kind of soundboard ideas off of each other. We think we learn together. That's it. We don't make plays together. We don't, there's no financial advice being given. I'm not going to tell you what is going on. Lie. You're okay. Nous voila is a financial professional. You can contact him directly for his certification. Um, but you are still not to take financial advice from him. Um, in the chat, you can contact him directly if you have need of a financial professional. Uh, I do have two financial professionals that I have reached out to, guys, that I will be uh, throwing into the chat as links for those who want to contact somebody to have them look at a portfolio or do retirement stuff. But, um, yeah, that's uh, we are not professionals. We are DGENs. Uh, don't do what I do ever. Don't do what I do ever. Um, people looking at my portfolio, uh, yeah. Yikes. So currently down about 30 grand. Solid. Another thousand bucks today. Uh, let's see. On the Canadian side, I'm green. SHG is green. Never do what I do. Never do what Millennial does. Uh, if we head over to tip ranks, do, 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 do. What's interesting is, guys, my portfolio has been going down. However, my ranking on tip ranks as a result is going up. I'm now ranked 60,000 out of 330. Still don't know where I incurred that weird negative 30% because like, none of my trade history shows that on tip ranks. Um, this month, last month, guys, Spy beat me. Uh, it's the first time in six months that has beaten me. So I'm a little bit salty about that. However, this month it's showing me as down 12 and three quarter percent on the portfolio. I think by the end of this month, I kicked the crap out of the Spy. I'm expecting to see this somewhere around the 25 to 50% gain on the month. So... Well, your portfolio beta is pretty high, so I mean, like, if the spy explodes in the and you're in the correct direction, I mean, you probably would be uh, a lot better off than everybody else. Um. So, what you guys want to see here? Are these holdings updated? I don't think these holdings are updated. How much does this say I have of Zemetica? I'm, I'm beating 000. the spy and. <laughs> Uh, I'm beating the spot and the average tip ranks portfolio right now with my 1.6%. SHG. Oh, this one's not accurate. 2600 at a buck 35. I'll give you one lighted guess on what uh, part of my portfolio is the thing that's keeping my percentages up. And then this, I'm. Oh, I didn't close this out. Shoot. Ah, that's gonna show as a loss, and I, I took gains on that. That sucks. Hmm. Because there's no way. This is the one thing that they do to make it, you know, kind of credible. Is oh, that sucks? I wish they would just take brokerage statements. Yeah, I mean, I have to close that out so that this is accurate, but that's unfortunate because. I took a gain on that AQST. 
Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not worried about Zometica guys at all. Um, Come on, Lumen, pop fourteen, just pop fourteen. So with options, guys, the only thing that I am waiting on with options now is Macy's. I've got to put into May on Macy's. Eric, six months. Let's go. Um, did Macy's do earnings already? Macy's PayPal approves or yeah, PayPal is going to expand its crypto offerings. No shocker there. This is hilarious to me. Macy's beats. It beats and it beats on revenue. Down 19% year over year. A company that's considering bankruptcy. It beat. Yay. Get out of here with that bullshit. Anyway, so I've got Macy's seven puts for May. Um, I probably won't get there because these are the main monthlies, so their earnings aren't going to come in. But I've got ACRX 250. Well, I can just show you guys this, right? Let's pull that up. All right, so SPPI took calls for August, $5 calls. I'm thinking that they're going to get their approval from the FDA before then. Um ACRX, I have 250 calls for September. I think that that's going to hit that no problem. AQB to 10. Uh, I'm very, very confident that AQB is going to 10 at least. Uh, where is it right now? Yeah, it's 640 right now, but given the growth in that, I think it's going to do quite well. Um, then I got Coke, uh, SNDL, Sabre, CCL, and GME for January. Uh, GME is the put, um, and then for 2023 January, I've got DGLY and SNDL, and I think DGLY is just going to be, these 250 DGLY calls are going to be nuts by January 2023. Um, I'm, I'm really happy about those. I will probably look to put more into those. Uh, but yeah, CCL and Sabre should run with the travel sector. Uh, Coke is consumer staples. SNDL is pot. Um, those are kind of the, the big ones that I'm looking to make cash on. Uh, AQB could be a big player too, depending on how hard it moves, but we'll see. We'll see. But that's that's kind of the options portfolio for now. Um, it's it's just been floating that 3K mark for a while now, so we'll see. Uh, Roblox is this week. I'm not playing that, not looking at it, not psyched for it. I got nothing on that. Um, SPACs, nothing. Biopharma calendar, nothing. Um, really, this is a week of watching the stimmies for me. Watching the stimmies. Would love to see some news come in from FTOC, but... Uh, what does Saber do? Uh, they provide the backend systems for organizing travel. 
Uh, so if you're an airline or a, a cruise line and you're trying to keep track of passengers and and information on vaccines, which is going to be something that's going to have to be in there, um, Sabre is kind of that tool that lets them do that, from my understanding. Um, Uh, for those of you that weren't around this weekend, we did create, well, I created a new strategy. Uh, it's looking at the top movers over the weekend, um, taking an entry on them pre-market or at open, um, preferably on open, I guess, pre-market if you can get it, but um, yeah, subtle. They, they're ready to roll. They're ready to roll, which is why I'm, I'm really pumped about it. If I can, if I can get some Medica money out uh, by April 1st. Uh, I will be exiting my Zemetica position most likely, and wherever I'm at with that, I will probably look at taking DGLY, AQB, and AMTX uh, off of that. Uh, but this strategy, guys, I take the top movers from over the weekend. I'm looking at entering and then exiting uh, at Friday, just before the close. Um, this is a short strategy. I should say that. So these gains that you're seeing, this is off the shorts. Uh, the projection off of this is about a 70% win rate. Um, it would have made a fifty, close to a 50% gain on a $50,000 portfolio um, in a month. Which ain't bad. The real trick with this will be to, if the market decides to go green. No, oh, that's not what I want. Shoot. If the market goes green, does this cancel this out? But first 15 minutes of Zemetica is wild. Yeah, dollar ninety two. And just like that, I went from being down thirty percent to twenty four percent. Made up six percent in like fifteen minutes. It's just a holding game for me at this point, guys. My FA did not change on these positions, so I am not changing my positions. I am confident on the FA that I have done. It's March 8th. The hype on Zemetica is just going to build and grow. SNDL, I'm not going anywhere. Their earnings on the 17th for SNDL I think is going to be a big deal. I think the earnings on SNDL for the 17th, they are going to talk about and they are going to get a lot of questions about what are you going to do with that pile of money. You've got no debt. You're sitting on $700 million. Do you have no cash to average down? Nope. Nope. No more cash. No more dollar. It's all in there. Every penny. I, I'm refusing to trade on margin, guys. So I have to make sure that between the Canadian margin and the U.S. margin account, I am in cash. Uh, and I am currently, if I was to transfer over the 1683 from this over here, uh, it would leave me kind of cash neutral. Um, so I, I don't want to be in margin. I don't want to get a margin call. I don't want these positions closed or liquidated uh, without my approval. So um, that's kind of where I will be and what I'll be doing with that. Um, Okay, it's 9.46, so let's head over here. Uh, share lover, I don't know. Uh, new voila, no, I actually, I so I had, on a $50,000 account, I, w I was... I had a drawdown of two grand and I had $3,000 in margin and I got a margin call from TD to rectify the position. Um, 
So let's go to stream tickers to watch. Let's clear out anything that doesn't need to be here. All right, if you guys have, oh yeah, I had it happen for sure. A $2,000 drawdown and I got margin called. 2,000 on 50K is not 50%. The equity you had qualify. What do you mean? My total book cost was 50K on the portfolio. The value of it was 47 grand. Uh, it was all US holdings. It was all, none of it was OTC. So it was all stuff that was uh, NASDAQ. Um, but yeah, I had three grand in margin on a 50K account in use. And my drawdown was about two and a half grams so 47 five or something uh and i got notice from td that i was getting margin called which was fine because i just I, I liquidated a small portion of the position to cover but it was nuts twas nutty but yeah with the potential for a market downturn uh bubble popping etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera, uh i think that i don't want to be anywhere near margin trading so uh, nope. Staying in cash. S and L, GME, and AMC. I definitely wasn't in any of those uh, when this happened. This was back in January. Um, DGOY, waiter, that kind of stuff was more. The reason why I have no margin available right now, why there's no buying power and they're giving me no margin on the account, is probably because my holdings are Zemetica and SMDL. I would guarantee that those two are not marginable for sure. Um, don't know about MGTI, but it is what it is. Um, all right. Yeah. Throw tickers out, guys. Let's get uh, the ticker list building here. If you have tickers you want me to take a look at, Go ahead and throw them in chat. Kintera, yep, we can look at that one. EPD. GHVI. I like that one. I like UAVS. All right, and that's it. Let's get the ball rolling. I'm going to go through these stickers, and then that's kind of it for the day, guys. There's not much else that I'll be doing today. Uh, sing. Arkea. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll break this stuff down, guys. Uh, I'll go through it real quick. And then, honestly, things start to get a little bit more exciting as we move through the week here and stimulus actually goes through and things start to happen. Uh, it's probably uplisted. If it went from FERG to FERG Y, or if it went to FERG from FERG Y, why is the 
uh, non-American designation for OTC, so it probably uplisted. Um, but yeah, I can definitely take a look. Did Teeny take a break from streaming? Yeah, she's trying to figure her crap out. I think she said she was going to try for today, but if not, she should be back by tomorrow. So hopefully that goes well. But uh, let's get started here. K-T-R-A. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So, guys, if you're new to the stream, uh, make sure that you're following. Uh, I'd love to know who you guys are, what you trade. I want to try to be as helpful as possible for you guys. Kintera is one that I have watched over and over and over again over the last year. Uh, they are a biopharmaceutical company. Uh, when you are looking at a biopharmaceutical company, and I know, guys, it's going to be repetitive for you that have been here. But... you head here you go to their website you go to their pipeline and you look at the pipeline they have nothing in phase three nothing so i do not trade the pipeline unless they are through phase three this is where money starts to be made right here after phase three Yeah, the podcast I'd like to get back to doing with Martini and Redemption. I, I don't know if Exile's still down or not, but I, I'd love to keep going on that podcast because uh, I, I think that that podcast was a really, really valuable piece of content for people. Um, you guys can catch the last few episodes we did. They're still great listening. Um, we haven't done a new one lately, but. Uh, this is, no, 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 it's not the same for everything in Biofarm. So if you are developing a medication, this is, this is the process. Preclinical pre IND, phase one, phase two, phase three. But then there's actually some phases after it. So NDA comes after phase three, and then your PDUFA comes after your NDA. Um, so preclinical is you come up with an ID, idea. IND is you submit to the FDA that you're willing to start doing trials on this. You do a phase one trial, which is usually in a lab in a Petri dish or on small mammals. Uh, phase two, you move to human trials uh, under a very small grouping. Phase three, you move to a large grouping uh, with test data. And then if this test data is good enough, you submit an, an, an NDA, uh, which allows the FDA to do its final approval on the drug. And then your PDUFA allows you to market that drug in the U.S., uh, so those are these are the ones that I like to trade. It's after phase three of the data looks good, trading on their NDA or PDUFA dates. So uh, the way that you can find that pretty easily is you go to Biofarm Catalyst. This is the calendar that I liked. Um, and then you can just hop in here real quick and see what's going on. Um, on the on this week, there's nothing. Uh, next week, FGen and uh, AZN have a PDUFA filing. Uh, Kinsa has a PDFA filing. PCRX has a PDUFA. Uh, Zeal Blue. Where's Zeal here? Avio PDUFA. So there's lots of opportunity here, guys. You could you could technically just trade the Biofarm calendar off these PDUFAs. Um, because by the time they get to PDUFA, it means that they've already had their NDA approval. This is just approval on marketing, and it's a positive headline for them. So if you see that there's a dip on some of these, and they're they're down, they're beaten down, um, there is a good opportunity for these to, to rally on the PDUFA approval. So... Um, the only thing that... Guidance is the only thing that's going to matter with SNDL earnings. What they actually do in sales won't matter. Yeah, anything that's a medical device has a different approval process, You do, and it's not as public and transparent. Um, it's also quite a bit faster uh, than a drug. Because typically it's, it's really just one step. Does the device work or not? Uh, space is killing it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not hating today. At least this went the direction I thought it was going to be. I thought I'd have a green day today, and it's looking like that's the case. Um, so I'm not hating it. But uh, yeah, so with Kintera, I'm not interested because they haven't completed anything in Phase 3. So that means that there's no dollars coming in. 
Um, that's kind of where I am on that. Um, uh, EPD. Enterprise products partners, midstream energy services producers, natural gas, natural gas liquids, petro refined products. I like liquid gas. I like natural gas. Um, not really a ton of revenue growth planned on this, though. Uh, what was the seasonality on natural gas? Into June, right? Not gas? It's uh, going yeah. into winter? No. No. Oh, I don't think so. Let me look at the equity clock. Yeah, I just, I'm just i pulling up the equity clock right now. Yeah, its peak is into June. Yeah, peak is into June. That makes sense. Looks like right now actually is is the best time to consider if you're going to play a seasonality play. Other than getting it at the end of August, uh, getting in in February looks like a, a solid play. Only XUI, thanks for the follow, man. Much appreciated. Yeah, once stimulus is in play, guys, expect these hedges, the bitcoins, the golds, to see a decline. I, I would agree. Morning smash, how you doing, man? Um, yeah, so I don't hate this. Uh, it hasn't really shown a decline. Uh, it, I guess it did have a decline early February, but uh, it's still kind of floating that 23.5. If I pull up a five-year on it, really its peak was here. I think there's better natural gas plays than this. I would, the one that I've played in the past is uh, COG. <laughs> but it's in a similar place. What's up, Sinui? Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. I, I like the sector, not the ticker. Yeah, we're still dealing with that. Oil, gas, drilling sector. I mean, for me, Total is the one that I like the most because they've got exposure to a whole bunch of different markets. They do uh, petroleum, they do natural gas, they do oil, they do solar, they do all kinds of stuff. So um, Total would be my best all-around uh, energy play. Nice, man. Nice grab. Uh, Eyes, E-Y-E-S. I feel like we've looked at this one in the past week. Second Sight Medical Products. Yeah, so... Uh, they got their approval on their their retinal prosthesis, so th this means that this is a this is an approval on a piece of tech. Um, so this is to give the blind sight. Uh, so if you're blind, you can use this. Uh, they'll pop in one of these retinal prosthesis and you'll be able to see again, which is kind of a big deal. Um, so it's up, guys, I, but it, they're also not going to start production until their merger with whatever this other company is that they're merging with is done. So what you're going to see now is biodegradation on this. You'll see this thing to slowly, slowly, slowly come down. Man, GME, one of these days, and I don't, I'm not one of those guys that's saying it's going to be quad witching, that's the day that it falls, but there will come a day when GME just craters back to reality. I don't know when it's going to come, but it's going to come, and I'm betting it's going to be before January of next year, but the day that it happens and GME comes back to reality, all of this hype is just going to dissipate and it's going to... It's when they uh, run out of buyers. That's pretty much it. When the stimulus, uh, like I was saying, uh, people who are uh, hate watching my video didn't realize that I was talking about after stimulus. Like if there's no more stimulus, there's no more buyers. You guys have no more money to throw at this fucking thing. 
that's when I would actually come in and strike because I know that you guys are fully invested. There's no more money that's, uh, or like there's no wave of money coming in to try to uh, fight me. I, I'm going to hit you at your weakest. <laughs> that's 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 how I would think as a uh, as a bankster. Um, you imagine they'll spike around the day checks go out. Yeah, there will be a spike on CMLs going out. But who here? Okay, it poll time. We haven't done a poll in a while, so let's do a poll. I'd say two to six weeks after uh, the checks go out, and if if the price settles and I see that there's not enough buying strength anymore, I would strike it because I have. Uh, I I have I would be a bankster who has like a lot of privileged information and access to really smart people that can give me data. All right, pulls in GME price as of December thirty first. Get your votes in. Where do you think it's going to be? Sub 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, or over 40? Let me know what you think. Where do we see GME December 31st? Let that run for a minute. Um, so, yeah, I, I like this tech. I think that there's a huge opportunity in this. I think it does have potential to run to, uh, I would give it a price target. If you can actually make blind people see, uh, I'll put that at around $80 a share. Uh, that, I mean, curing blindness, right? Well, I'll peg that pretty high. Um, I like it. All right, the winner, 10 to 20 bucks. I would agree, because that's exactly where I see the value for this company is 10 to 20 bucks. Um, we did have, we did have five people that thought it would be less than 10. We had an equal weighting almost, seven people that said it would be over 40. Uh, for those of you that think it's gonna be over 40, I would, that's great, I, I, I just can't fathom what they're going to do to make that happen. Um, you, have, you have to remember, guys, not two months ago, this company was considering bankruptcy, closing up shop entirely. Um, now, I, I didn't think that was going to happen. Michael Burry didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, we, we both made our gains on GME, but uh, I I had a price at 20 on the high side. That That's kind of where I thought it would max out if it could get there. So the fact that we're at 150 right now is disgusting. Just disgusting. Uh, and I think by December 31st, we see it just dissipate entirely. Um, All right. Millennia. DRNA. What? You might you might know this off the top of your head more than me, but uh, Sydney was asking, do you guys know any companies in the oil and gas drilling sector? Want yeah, to do I told them total. TOT. Oh, okay. TOT is the best all-around energy package. Uh, the other one that I would take a look at in energy is Oxy? AMTX. Oh. No, AMTX. Uh, if you wanted a pure natural gas play, uh, Cabot, COG. AR is another one. Yeah, AR is another one. Uh, I did look at AR at 1.2. Uh, are you saying for 2069 was not an accurate price target? I would say it is a price target. Uh, I would not say that I have any faith in that price target. Um, but what I know, I'm a Canadian hobo, right? Uh, okay, this is another pharmaceutical company, guys, DRNA, so let's do the same thing. And I know, guys, this feels repetitive and boring, but this is the work that you've got to do if you're going to trade bio. You have to. And I, I mean, this is an oversimplification just to, to go to the pipeline, because typically what I would do is, if the pipeline looks good, what I will do is actually go in and break down their, their clinical trials. Okay, so... What's clever about this is they are not they are not showing this as phase one, phase two, phase three. I would say that this isn't phase two right now. I'm not going to go anywhere near that. Preclinical, early clinical registration trials, unless unless they're calling early 
clinical phase one and then this is phase two, phase three grouped together. But if they're not here, I won't be there. Yeah, bio should be cut and dry, guys. This is one of the things I loved about it. When I first started trading bio, everybody looked at me like I was insane. Bio is so risky. It's so dangerous. And when I started trading it, what I realized is it is far less dangerous to trade biopharmaceutical than a lot of stuff out there. Bio gives you a pipeline. This is where we are. And as long as you understand what that pipeline means, there's great opportunity here. Uh, but yeah, this one's not for me. Nothing phase three. Akba. Kibia Therapeutics. This is another one. Renal Therapeutics for Kidney Disease. Okay, there's a lot of these out there. So this is, they would have to be first in class. Yeah, Chem Life, you do have to, you will have to read a medical report at some time. You will have to read tests. You will have to start to understand that. And that does take time for sure. But just understanding the pipeline is a great start. You could do very, very well on just the pipeline. Um, I, I hate it when they hide. So they've got two in phase three. Top line results coming May 5th. So what this is saying is, guys, they've got 3,900 people enrolled in this for dialysis. Uh, primary safety endpoint is major adverse cardiovascular, so you're not seeing any lung or heart issues. Uh, this is saying Q3, top line results Q3. So both of them, it's uh, it's MACE for the primary safety endpoint, so they don't want people having heart attacks or lung failure as a result. Efficacy is changing hemoglobin from baseline, so this is a blood, simple blood test to see that there's an improvement on uh, the anemia due analysis. Yeah. Uh, oh, 2020. Yeah, no, so bottom line results would be the next ones that you're looking for. Uh, let's see when they have a forecast for that. Uh, I know another thing that you can do is just head here and go to companies, catalyst calendars, company, no, FDA calendar. AKBA. Throw the ticker in here. This is the next 50 events. Okay, so this is saying, yeah. So there, there are two designations for their NDA filing are due mid-second quarter. So now wouldn't be a terrible time to look at this. Yeah, Magic Nachos, you're right. So their NDA filing is coming up mid-second quarter. So... Um, it'll be interesting to see. It will. Two seconds, guys. I'll be right back.
Yeah. So again, I, I trade the marketing side of biopharma. I still read the medical reports and I have done for a long time. Um, but for me, guys, I, I trade the marketing side of it. When can they start selling it and marketing it? That's when the money comes in and that's when it, things get really, really relevant uh, for for movement on pricing. Um, but AKBA, uh, Q2. SWBI. Guns is, right? Guns is. Um, they're saying, so people are cutting this guys, in my opinion. Wow. This is $16. Oof. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, I guys, I don't think the gun run is over. The reason why I pulled out from the chart was to see the Obama years, right? Take a look at the Obama years from 2017 was when Trump went in, right? So uh, this went from SWBI was around three dollars all the way up to thirty under Obama. Yeah, it, I would say it's a four-year hold. But if you want to hold for four years to go 10x, I mean, that would have been worth it, right? Now, here, do I think this is going to go 10x? No, I think this is going to be 100% gain um, over four years. Now, 100% gain over four years, that's 25% a year. That's not terrible gains, right? That, that's not awful. But I, I think that SWBI buys up over Biden. Presidency. GHVI. This is a SPAC. Uh, the way that I play SPACs is I wait till the merger date. So. UAVS. This is a drone play, guys. Uh, at one point, it had a lot of hype because it sounded like Amazon was going to pair with them. It had a short report, which presents a great opportunity for a buy the dip. Um, there's an over adjustment. DGLY is flying. I mean, everything seems to be doing quite well today. Um, my DGLY 250 calls for January. 2023 are doing just fine right now. Yeah, DGLY should do well on the on that trial for sure. Um, this is where, as spring has sprung, guys, we don't get a lot of protests and riots during the winter because nobody wants to be out in that shit, right? But as we head into spring and summer, expect the BLM movement to start rioting again. Expect the, the pissed off right wing to start rioting and protesting again. That's going to happen again, which means DGLY is coming into seasonality, I guess. Like, riot season's upon us. Um, riot season is upon us. Yeah, Mara's going to do quite well. Um, yeah, guys, I, I do think that UAVS should be somewhere in the 10 to 15 range so that it's dropped this far down to six bucks. Like, it's looking really nice to me. Um, I think it's a solid by the dip play. Sing. Okay, guys, before I talk about Sing, before I pull it up in any way, shape, or form, I want you guys to realize that this is an absolute red flag, dog shit, OTC, buyer beware, caveat emptor play. This thing is an atrocity. It's an abomination to all things that are the market 
Please, please, please understand that this thing is a total hunk of crap. Later, Stoby. Um, it is a total hunk of crap. A giant steaming pile of dog shit. And nobody in their right mind should ever trade this piece of crap. Now, that being said, I have traded this piece of crap. Um, in the past, full disclosure, I have traded this piece of crap. Uh, I traded it. Um, I traded it, let's sort these by date, January 13th, I took a position, uh, at 0 0.004, so that this was a zero cent stock, um, yeah, definitely from experience, I'm never just going to throw it out there, so I, I, I traded Sing when it was a zero cent stock, Grabbed 20,000 shares of it at zero cents. Um, I then sold it for uh, two cents a share, uh, which worked out to be, what was what that increase from uh, four tenths of a cent to two cents is like a 400% gain, something like that. So I took a 400% gain on it. Um, I got in again at, I don't know at what level I got in, but I, I took an 80,000 share position. Oh, entry. Entry at six, out at almost seven. $600 gain on a, on a day trade. Um, it is back down to two right now. I think last time I looked at it, it was two. This is like a, a far, so I'm a degen. Uh, I am, yeah, sure. That's fair. Um, That's interesting. That sings up 26% today. Look at CIDM today, Redemption. Hmm? What? CIDM's up 25% today. Oh, yeah, no, I'm still in that thing. <laughs> that thing went from, like, you know, uh, sub-dollar, then 10 oh whatever, uh, 101, 108, and then... In a flash, it was like at 118. I'm like, yeah, someone's aggressively buying this this, this morning. Later, Triton, man. Take it easy. Uh, okay, what else do we have here? I just want to finish off these last few tickers. So get rid of that. Uh, HVAC filtration, residential solar, extremely high risk. RKF is a crypto play. If you can trade it, great. I still can't trade it. Uh, GME is mooning right now. Yeah. Um... I don't see anything here saying that it's changed from Fergie. It's UK based, so it's definitely still European. Did this get uplisted? No, oh, it's definitely Ferg in here at 120, but I can't trade it at 120. Fergie. I can't trade Fergie. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with it. If Fergie Fergie is Ferg, I don't I don't know, man. My brokerage is confused by it, so not sure what exactly is going down there. It's gone, your shares are not tied to any company now. I don't see any news on it. Um Sometimes if you go to stock twits, people know what's going on.
it says it will start trading its ordinary shares on the New York Stock Exchange. It looks like it's uplisting to the New York Stock Exchange from the OTCs. Um, I don't know when you'll see you you will see it change over. Uh, that's the case. It'll probably just take a couple of days. But that's great news, man. If it's got uplisted to the stock from from OTC to the NYSE, that's fantastic. That's great news. Did I go through GHVI yet? No, I haven't. I think it's an uplisting from what I'm reading there. Okay, GHVI, last one. Let's go. What do we got? Oh, I did. I did go through GHVI. Uh, Lissiana, my thoughts on GHVI are it's a SPAC. So I'll trade SPACs the way that I trade SPACs now, which is when I see that there is a merger completed date, I'll take a look at it. Yeah, GHVI. Where is it? There it is. SPAC play. Um, I don't really care what they're buying at this point. SPACs all operate the same. So I skipped ARB. No, ARB is crypto. ARB is a really solid crypto play. And I said that if you can trade it, great, trade it. I can't trade it at all. My platform does not make it available to me. Uh, it's a great crypto play, though. Um, if I could have traded it, I would have. But I can't. So I have to look elsewhere. HUT is probably the next one that I'm looking at. FTOC is finally green. Yay. Uh, not in my books. I, I'm seeing it down. But uh, FTOC, I don't have a worry about. I think FTOC is just a, a really solid long-term hold for me at this point. Um, I, I, It is one of the few SPACs that I am considering just holding. Because I think Payoneer is going to do so well. Thank you so much for the follow, guys. Much appreciated. Uh, so for the day, guys, portfolio has recovered 4%. I'm okay with that on a day. Did you say A-A-V-E-X? I did not. I did not. I have no idea what that is. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Oh, it's a crypto play. Yeah, no, I'm not interested in that. Uh, oh, Hut. Hut is the one that I'm. I would consider playing. Uh, or I would. There's another one that I was looking at. It says the new Ebon on it. Where is it? Sino, S I N O. That would be the other one that I. Yeah, I, I don't trade cryptocurrency directly, guys. I, I trade miners. I don't trade the, the coin itself. Yeah, I'm holding for Payoneer. I'm not too worried about the share transfer. AQB, uh, I really like. Uh, that's why I'm in options on it. Uh, but that's it for me today, guys. I will be back tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., hanging out with you guys, doing this deal. So if you're not following, make sure you're following. You've got your notifications. Uh, if you're watching on LinkedIn or wherever else, uh, I will pop up there as well. So uh, make sure that you connect there, sub there, do all that fun jazz. For now, Martini is not live today. She'll hopefully be back tomorrow. But for now, guys, let's head on over. For our friend, Mr. The Stock Guy. Let's see what those crazy, crazy cats are doing over there. Make sure if you're sub, you drop the beaver in there. And we all know how much Stocky loves the beaver. So make sure you throw that in there. Let them know Millennial sent you. Uh, have an amazing day, guys. Stay green out there. Enjoy the stimulus tomorrow. We will be back later, later, later. Take it easy.